Hello, everyone, and welcome to Handmade Hero, the show where we code a complete game live on stream, the livest on streamist that one can possibly be when one is live on stream. Uh, look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, we've, you know, we've got, we've got some serious entity work to do. Uh, we did a bunch of cool stuff to our entity system. Uh, but now's the time to start, uh, you know, start getting real in there. Start, start, you know, facing up to, to the hard life, the hard real realities, the harsh realities of life as an entity. Um, and I'd like to dive right into it. So today is day 281. I think we've got that right. Is that right? Let's double check if today is, in fact, day 281. 279. Oh, well, looks like the episode guide may be missing a day. Let's double check. From the YouTube handmade archive. No, what is it? YouTube.com slash user handmade hero. Such great vanity URLs from YouTube, right? They nailed it. Uh, but yeah, day 280. So it's day 281 here. We reset C tray. That's the only reason that I uh, wanted to double check that. So day 281 is what we're on. You want to unpack day 280's source code. Uh, if you want to follow along with what I am doing, that's what I'm starting with. And if I remember correctly, we ended yesterday on a, a slight bug I wanted to look at. I probably will look at it now. Um, and that's just a glitch. We re-implemented basically room-based movement. Uh, re-implement's a strong term. Uh, we basically just turned it back on again. Uh, and so what I wanted to do was take a look at exactly how uh, this transition was working when I come up here. Uh, there's some kind of, I believe, a glitch where I see for a split second, I felt like I was seeing, yeah, I, I still am. I see a flash, it's like an instant flash of, uh, this, the, of a different screen. And, and it's like, I don't know how it's getting that, but it's obvious to me, or at least it seems relatively clear to me, that the camera update takes two frames to work properly, you might not be able to see that because of the Twitch. Uh, you know, it's your compre you're getting a compressed video stream and it probably throws that frame out entirely. But you'll just have to trust me, it's there. Uh, I know that it's there. And uh, let's go ahead and, oh, come on, come on, Mr. Potato, there we go. Uh, and so I just want to take a look at that logic. It's not like it's the final logic that's going to be used in the game at all, but I want to make sure uh, that there isn't something deeper going on because we were just sort of finishing up how this code was going to work and we don't want uh, to have some stuff in there that we don't understand, right? Like I don't want there to be something weird happening and I don't understand what it is. If it's just something like, so go, we got to write the final camera code later and it'll be different, that's fine, but I don't want there to be... Um, a glitch that's happening for some other reason. And so I want, that's why I'm interested in investigating this particular uh, thing. So here we go with our um, camera movement. You can see here when we do NSIM, we do uh, unpacks uh, into, the, into the buffer here. Uh, I'm sorry, packs into the buffer where we uh, do a sort of all of our uh, entity write out. And before we do anything else, you can see here, we, before we pack the entity into uh, the permanent storage, we go through and we update the camera if this happens to be the entity that the camera's following, right? Now, why we check every time, I don't know. Uh, that's not a particularly interesting thing to do. We could just check outside this loop, and that's probably smarter. I'm going to leave it in there, though, because the whole point is to investigate this bug, so I don't want to start touching things until I actually know what's going on. So, uh, I'm going to take a look inside here. We're going to say, all right, we've got this entity. We know that this is the one we are following. We have not touched the entity yet, right? There's been no editing of the entity. Uh, code yet. So we drop through here and we say, okay, um, let's process this thing. You can see that we've got this global uh, render camera room based. That's what's actually happening here. If you turn that off, you go into scrolling mode. And I guess I should mention we haven't tested that scrolling mode. Uh, I probably want to delete it because there's never going to be a scrolling mode in this game. It is not something that actually is allowed. Um, but if I wanted to, uh, yeah, so it looks like that still works just fine. Uh, it can track the player exactly, and, and nothing weird happens there. It's kind of kind of nauseating. Um, I don't think we would want it to follow uh, the jumping like that, but it's kind of funny that it does, uh, to say the least. Anyway, 
so that's uh, clearly working fine. So the only thing that's not working is that update that's based on the room location. And so what I'm guessing is that this uh, particular, uh, this information here is really what the problem is. So if we take a look at what's going on, uh, we can see here that we're testing the entity's displacement from the, the sim region center, right? Because the sim region center is, of course, where the camera is. We're testing the displacement from the sim region center, and we're seeing whether it's more than 9 in the x direction or more than 5 in the y direction, and if it is, uh, we're displacing it. Now, I can pretty much tell you what the bug is already, because I'm just looking here, and it's like, that's the bug. <laughs> Right? For some reason, there's still a value of, of x displacement being stuck in there. And what's kind of interesting is this is sort of a feedback based operation. What's amusing is it's self corrected, right? So you can see what happens is it displaces the camera 18 units uh, to the right and then 10 units upward. And so effectively, what was happening uh, when we were moving out uh, side there. Here's day um, 281. Effectively, what was happening is here's the camera. This is what we're looking at. We hop off the edge. It detects that, okay? It hits this case, which is we're greater than five units off of uh, the center line, right? So then it says, well, I'd better displace this thing. 18 and 10 is the displacement it uses. So it's basically putting the camera like over here somewhere. Now, that's the 18 is what we would normally displace for the whole sideways motion, so it's, it's basically doing this. I don't really know how far we move it sideways if it's one whole screen. Whatever it is, that's what we're doing effectively. So the camera moves here, and then what happens is, and we see one frame with it there, but then the very next frame it goes, oh hey, guess what? That entity, uh, we're going to check its location again, and it sees that it's more than negative 9 off, it's, it's more than 9 units this way, right? So then it goes, oh, I'd better apply that displacement, which is this, which subtracts the 18 back off again, right? So we effectively do this to get there. So just the way that we happen to write the routine self-corrected, uh, which I guess is good, uh, but that's definitely a bug. Obviously, we only want to displace the camera in the direction we're trying to go and not in some other direction. That's kind of self-evident. Uh, so now when I hop off, I'm expecting something cleaner and I got something cleaner. Uh, we're no longer really locked to the size of a screen, it looks like, so we should probably take some uh, time to get that uh, looking a little bit co more correct. And the other thing that I would like to do uh, is I think I would like to have a more stable idea of what's uh, supposed to happen for the camera in terms of interpolation, because what we'd probably like to do uh, is even though I don't want any smooth scrolling in the game like I was saying, it would be nice to do a smooth transition between them. So even though you're locked to this view while uh, this little fellow is hopping around, when you go through here, even uh, the 8-bit Legend of Zelda, it like, bep, 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 you know, it kind of like transitioned the screen in. Since we've got plenty of horsepower, it seems like it would be nice uh, to give the user a nice animated uh, transition between those. Um, and, uh, and, and so I think that's what we'll play around with today. Like, obviously we fixed that very simple bug, but you know, maybe now's a good time to look at that camera code and actually make something real. Uh, I also think that now hopefully we shouldn't have any bugs uh, with, with any of uh, the camera motion. Like, and so we can hit up against these and we don't get any bugs. And so that's nice. Um, we're nice and stable here and that's good. Uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, and we're starting to, we're, things are starting to shape up here for our actual game code, which is nice because we're going to start dropping a bunch of logic in there and, you know, enemies and fighting and stuff like this. Uh, we don't want to be in a bad situation. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. Wow. So because our room thing happens to just be like sort of weird and buggy right now and just makes random stuff, I guess you can have those points occur further away. And so then you can like, oh, that's great. Because remember I said I wanted to make it so it's not on a fixed grid? Well, it happened to create a longer hop and he hops it. How cool is that? That's just great. I love it. Ha. Huh. Um, that's hilarious. Uh, okay. Well, um, yeah. So can we just full on abuse this system? That's so cool. 
I guess those, we shouldn't have put hoppable squares where the trees are. But that's kind of funny, right? Because we don't do any collision detection on the body now. Remember, we assume that anywhere that there's a hoppable right now, it actually lets it go through. There's a bunch of work we're going to do on that later. So that's, that's like a separate issue, but that's just kind of funny. Meow. Oh, that's so cool. Sorry, this is what happens when you start making games, is you find little things that you think are funny and you, you play with them. What can you do? All right, enough of that. Sorry to waste your time there. Um, so anyway, point being, what I'd like to do is start looking at how we could uh, have a more solid notion of where the camera should be looking. Uh, and then, you know, I'd like to make some sort of an, uh, an idea of how it's gonna interpolate back and forth. Um, that's, that would be my preference. So. I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce a more stable notion of that size of the screen. Uh, and when we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test more stably where we are in that, uh, uh, in that sort of screen boundary and then do some interesting things uh, with it. I think that's the best way to go. Uh, so let me pop over to the whiteboard for a second here and just talk about um, you know, camera control and some things that we wanna think about when we're doing camera controls. Okay, uh, so the first thing that I want to uh, explain, or maybe the really uh, one of the only things that I want to explain that's sort of a new concept to us that we haven't talked about very much, uh, is the concept of hysteresis. And I don't know how to spell hysteresis any more than you do, so let's just say that it's hysteresis. I don't know, like that maybe? I have no idea how to spell that word. There we go, we were close, we just missed the I, right? Uh, and hysteresis is kind of a, an important concept, especially with cameras. There are other situations where it's important uh, to understand what that means and why you should care, uh, but camera controls are probably the, the most important uh, because camera controls are the things, uh, or rather how your game deals with a camera, especially in 3D, but also in 2D, basically no matter what. Uh, hysteresis sort of is a concept that comes into play in a lot of ways. And so let's talk about what that means and why we should care. All right, so camera control is sort of the person's perception of where they are to a large extent, right? Because remember, when you put VR goggles on or something, uh, like if you're wearing a, an HTC Vive or something, then your point of view of the world is controlled by you in a natural way, right? Like I move my head around and it knows where I'm looking and all these other sorts of things. And so there's no real disconnect between the person and the point of view. But in a game where we're talking about a monitor, right, and you're, and you're sort of presenting this view of the world through that monitor, and the person's movement of their head and how they look is disconnected from what's actually going on, on the screen, you essentially have a perception problem, right? Uh, you sort of have like a perception, uh, almost like a perception grammar you might even say, uh, that's going on when you look through this monitor. So I look at the monitor, you know, and I see some things around in the monitor or whatever, you know, and I see them moving in certain directions. And I know because I'm a video game player and I've been conditioned for a long time to understand what I'm seeing on the screen, I know a bunch of things. When Handmade Hero comes up, it's not like, oh my God, what's going on? I don't understand. It's like, no, I immediately see, oh, this looks orthographic. I can see by the way, like the trees are in the ground. And even though we don't even have the final art in there, you're still already like, I just get it, right? I can move my guy around and whatever, whatever, right? Uh, and so what you have to remember is even though you probably know all this stuff and so do the gamers and everything else, just because we all take it for granted doesn't mean it's not still there. Uh, so there's constantly this sort of thing that's happening uh, where you've kind of got you. Let me give you a little bit of hair, just a tiny bit of hair there. Uh, you've got you and you're looking at the screen, right? And then you've got your hand on the, on the mouse or the keyboard or whatever, right? And you're doing stuff. This sort of arc that goes through where you're like seeing something, making decisions going through, there's a huge amount of perception that's going on there. There's all of these sort of things that you're doing in your brain to allow you to be able to play this game. And the camera, 
because it is out of your control, right? It's moving around not in the way your head moves, but rather in some sort of secondary response to what you're doing with the keyboard or the mouse, it's moving, right? Your ability to do what you need to do with the controls and your ability to perceive the game and your ability not to get sick and vomit all over the place, right? All of that is sort of tied up in the camera controls, uh, right? And so there's two things uh, that are happening there. One is like your, you know, your ability to sort of project, right? Your ability to know what, you know, I'm, I'm seeing what's in the world and I'm kind of imagining what it, that actually is in 3D and how it works. And then there's your ability to like control it, okay? And both of these are effectively have a transform happening, right? Your head is taking all these symbols it's seeing, they're very abstract, and they're not really in 3D, they're in like pseudo 3D. It's making this sort of understanding of what it really means and then you are sort of formulating what you would need to do with the controls to affect the change that you want to see happen on the screen and how you want to play the game you're doing that process right so it's like this step of like first construct what's actually happening in the world based on what i see construct what the controls are that i should use and, and like do that right and the camera messes with this more than anything else right because let's say for example that I'm looking at the screen, okay, uh, and you know I've got my guy here, and I'm like walking him forwards or something like this, and I'm trying to understand what I'm going to go hit when I'm here, and the camera just starts scrolling this way, right? Now my brain has to do this thing all of a sudden where it's like trying to go like, okay, the screen's moving this way, so I'm predicting the motion of these things, and I know that I would like curve slightly to the left or whatever, right? So the camera is like drastically changed that perception. Let's say I ro start to rotate it. So I'm pushing up on the thing. Well, now what happens? Does my guy keep pushing up as he turns or does he always move upwards in screen space even though the camera's like spinning him around or whatever, right? Uh, and if you don't believe me or can't think of an example, try to think of the last time you played a game that had clockwise, cl counterclockwise in it. Because this is the place where you can really tell, especially if you're like me and aren't super good at doing the mapping, right? There are these games that are like, oh, let's say I push the A key, my guy rotates that way, and I push the like D key and my guy rotates this way, right? So he's pointing this direction, I push the, the, uh, you know, the A key and he starts to rotate that direction. I push the D key and he starts to rotate the other direction, right? Well, if you've ever been in that situation, you know that when your guy is pointing downward, oftentimes you make this make of like, I want him to rotate this way, I push D, and it doesn't like go that way, it goes this way, because D is for rotating around in the clockwise fashion, right? Your ability to perceive like what the controls were, will do, right, relies on your brain's ability to constantly do these mappings of what do the controls mean. And so the camera's orientation, its position, its motion, all of those are like affecting your brain's ability to do stuff. Right? So yeah. In Handmade Hero, I hate, I hate this stuff. So there will be none of that ever. In Handmade Hero, I went with a control scheme uh, that's like you move by just pushing the direction you want to go and you attack them by pushing the direction you want to attack, right? It's a standard uh, control scheme that everyone understands and that does not involve any of those things. So. There's all sorts of issues with controls and your perception and all that sort of stuff. I'm just choosing to sidestep those and not tackle them because I think it's way better to just have nice direct controls that don't have that problem. So we don't have that, but uh, we still have all the same uh, problems with the camera. And let's take uh, as an example uh, to introduce the concept of, of hysteresis that I said is what I want to talk about here. Let's just take, for example, even what I'm already looking at right now, okay? Now you can see when I kind of move through there, right when i when i do that jump it's very jarring you know we don't really have a game going on here right we haven't made enemies that attack you so it's not it's like it's low stress that it's it's not a problem that's jarring because i don't need to do anything i'm not in imminent danger or anything but you can imagine if i just hopped in here and bam hopped in here and all of a sudden the screen comes up and there's like lava right in front of me and i'm about to die or whatever right like that's not a good experience right um, so even just what we have right now, we would start to worry about that whole perception loop. Are we allowing the player the ability, like, the, are we giving them what they need in terms of 
uh, a pleasant experience of moving from room to room? And the answer is like kind of already no. All right, so let's talk about what hysteresis is. Hysteresis is, is a word that essentially means, uh, you know, sort of <laughs> in programming products, uh, takes into account the previous frame, might be the way to, to put it. Uh, but another way to say it is that it's not time independent, right? Uh, so I can make a function uh, that does something and it could be completely independent of time, okay? Uh, and that's what we have right now. Like if you take a look at how our camera code works, effectively it's not dependent on time for, to, to really any significant degree. It's just dependent on position. So wherever the player goes, we will figure out uh, where they're supposed to go based on this. Now, it's not strictly true because since this is a delta, technically it is based on time a little bit. It's, it's based on the order in which you did things. And you can see that, uh, in fact, if I restart the game, you can kind of see that it is, ha does have a little bit of a dependence there, right? Uh, which is to say, I come up here, I come down here, um, and I can get it to be, well, actually, no, I guess that's not true. Our deltas are exactly even, so I guess it isn't. I was going to say you could get it into a different state, but I guess you can't, because our deltas are always exactly the same. Uh, so even so, yeah. So it's pretty much not dependent on time at all. It's just wherever the person is, there's a specific camera uh, position that is, um, that is the, the, the camera's going to look at in, uh, when, when they get there. Is that true? I think, I feel like, because even the, cause the 918, I don't know, that might not be true. It doesn't matter. Point being, ignore that for a second, uh, and let's just say this is only dependent on position rather than trying to figure out whether there's a way you could get it to not be, uh, right? That doesn't take into account time. It doesn't take into account the path that the player uh, flowed through the world, right? It just knows when the person's here, I want to show them uh, this particular camera angle. Now, hysteresis is about not doing that. It's about saying, let's take into account time. Let's take into account the path by which something arrived where it's going to be, and let's make uh, our algorithms aware of that, okay? Now, why is that important? Well, I'll give you a very simple example. Let's say that we had um, a room, perhaps, uh, and, you know, we, uh, we well, I'm trying to think of what the what the easiest way to to uh, to describe something like this is. Um, let's say that we have a room, and and we were trying to figure out where to place the camera in this room, right? Uh, and there is a a obstacle. Okay, that the player has to navigate in some way. Uh, it's like uh, somewhat difficult for them to navigate, right? Like maybe it's a, a locked door or something like this, right? Uh, and so I've got like a situation where I've got this door here, right? And then I've got a wall and, and then I've got, you know, some stuff down here or whatever. And then there's like an opening over here, right? Okay, now let's say uh, that our solution for how we were going to do the camera uh, was just that it's a fixed thing in the world and maybe this is what the, the map is going to be. And so the, the way that the, the partitions for the world work out is here's where like one camera angle is, right? Uh, and here's where another camera angle is, okay? Uh, and here's where another one is, right? Uh, and you can imagine that if all I was going to do is just pick one of these based on where I was, I don't get a very satisfying result from this, right? Because if I'm walking up to the room this way, right, if this was the way I was coming in, and maybe I can, you know what, let me simplify this a little and just consider the top two parts, uh, since that'll be a little bit easier. Okay. Uh, so here's one. Let's, let's do it this way. Here's one. Here's the other. Uh, so I'm coming in this way. I walk in through the door, uh, the open area in here. And then I'm in this area and I can't even see this yet, right? I walk off the side of the screen, which appears to have nothing on it. And then I'm in this little tiny sliver of space with the door and I see all this stuff over here, right? That's what, I, that's what I'm getting, okay? Uh, now, if instead I was, let's say there was another entrance over here, if instead I walked this way and came around through here, then I would get a much more pleasant thing, what I would expect. I'd be able to see the room I was in, I'd be able to see the door, right, and only a little bit of what's on the other side of it. Makes good sense, right? Now, 
If you take a look at this and go, I would like both approaches, I would like both of these to work properly, then what you want, right, is a camera scheme that takes into account where you came from, right? If I'm approaching from this side, I want to see up to the door and end. If I'm approaching from this side, I want to see up to the door and end, right? So I'm gonna have like different views for potentially similar locations depending on when I came through, right? And that's the nature of hysteresis. Not the best example, and I apologize for that. I wanted to give at least one other example, and for some reason I'm having trouble thinking of one. Now I will give you the example I actually care about, which is what we need to use it for in Handmade Hero. Okay. Now I just said what I wanted to do when we were talking about it before, is I've got a room-based camera model. So this sort of thing is not super concerning to us because we're building our like individual play units to be contained inside a screen anyway, right? So I don't need to worry about picking camera views. The camera views are created as part of the world creation. We know what a room is. Uh, and regardless of how big or small we make rooms or even if there are multiple room sizes, the camera has always has very strict information. This is what you should show, show this, right? So we don't have that hysteresis problem to talk about before, but we do have a different one. Uh, and that is our standard room kind of uh, layout, right, will be one that looks uh, sort of like this. We'll have two different camera views, right? Here's camera view A uh, and here's camera view B. And we've got a passageway in between them and the player will cross that threshold at some point and will want to transition from the camera from A to B, right? And what I want to do there is I want the camera to sort of smoothly vary from A to B and back, right? And so there's a couple different ways that we might want to do this. And I'm not sure exactly how we want to do them, but I wanted to talk to you about the hysteresis aspect. So when I start mentioning that, uh, as we sort of play with things, it, we may choose to use a method that takes uh, into the, into that, that into account. Now, a method that has no hysteresis, like I just said, will always will mean that wherever the player is, right, at any time, anywhere that I pick, it does not matter how they got there, we will be able to say exactly where the camera is. So if the thing is here, the camera angle is B. If the thing is here, it's A, right? And we can construct a smooth scrolling camera system, right, that would work with this. The way we would do that is we would take some region in between the two and say as the player transits between these two locations, right, we take the T value that maps from camera A to B, right? We've got sort of a camera uh, A, T, B thing happening here that outputs some kind of interpolation between the two, okay? Uh, we could say that that T value, that interpolation T value, is just based on where you are in this narrow corridor, right? And that'll probably be the first thing I'll try. If it's good, great. But we may have a problem. And what the problem might be is what if the player dallies in here? What if the player just kind of hops back and forth in between here? The camera will just be going like this, like crazy, right? Maybe that's what we want to have happen. I don't know. And like I said, we'll play with it. But maybe we don't. And if we don't want that to happen, that's where we have to start thinking about hysteresis. And what hysteresis will tell us in this situation is we have to pay attention to what the player's actually been doing. And then we can figure out whether we want this to happen. So for example, if the player starts hovering in here, maybe we want to bring the camera to a rest, straddling the two rooms, right? Until they cross this side of the threshold for more than a second or something, right? And again, so then we're putting in that hysteresis, that measurement of where they've been. Wow, I can't even write that. Uh, we're putting in that measurement of where they've been and we're figuring out how to sort of change the function of the camera so that it, it has state associated with it based on what the player has been doing, okay? Uh, and so I'm not sure exactly which one we're gonna do or how we're gonna do that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the direct mapping one first, and the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna introduce essentially a apron, right? I'm gonna say that there's, there's sort of this, this border region here, right? Where as you cross into it, if you cross into one of these areas, and I don't know what it'll do if you're in one of these, um, maybe both transitions, I'm not sure. 
Uh, but if you cross into one of these areas, it will start to do the interpolation, right? Uh, and and as it starts to do that interpolation, uh, if you come back, it'll 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 just use basically your distance in there to figure out what the you know what that uh, interpolation level should be. Okay. Um, so what this is going to mean is we're going to need some information, like our camera, our understanding of where the camera is needs to be a little bit broader. Uh, because right now we have this concept that the simulation region and the camera are coincident, but that's not actually what we want uh, in uh, it to be, right? Our simulation region should always be the room you're in and only when it crosses. So like this, I guess what I'm saying is this code is actually correct for the camera as far as the simulation region is concerned. So that's fine. And then once you cross into another room, we move the simulation region over there, right? And that's fine. But uh, we need sort of this other idea of, of displacement of the camera. And so in addition, I'm gonna go into world mode and, and add a concept here that we have a displacement. Now, this is probably a good thing in general, not just for our smooth scrolling. And the reason that it's probably a good thing in general, right, is because we want, for sure, uh, we want like things like screen shake and stuff to be easy to implement. Like if we want to shake the screen like a big monster like stomps on the ground or something, we might want to shake the screen or something like this. Uh, so we would we want the ability to displace things around anyway. Um, and so that's you know just kind of a natural thing we might uh, want to do. So what I'm going to do in here. Since we have the concept of the uh, camera P, I don't know what last camera P is for. In fact, before we get started, I just want to see what, what is that even used for? Absolutely nothing. So then I'm going to have a, uh, you know, camera displacement. Uh, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to, when we actually go ahead and use the camera P uh, to sort of actually create the, um, uh, let's go down here. Uh, when we use that to create the center of the of the sim region, you can see we do this begin sim and then we start drawing things and that sort of stuff, right? What I want to do is I want to be able to displace this without displacing the simulation region, right? And the way that I'm going to do that is just by saying, well, okay, we we know that we have some rendering that's occurring, right? And in fact, I guess I don't know where we actually start the render. Here's where we start the render. Uh, and we do this perspective where we do uh, we do a perspective transfer in here, right? And what I want to do is when we start doing the offsets, because we do entity transforms offset p, uh, and we do this stuff here where we do get ground entity point that stuff. I want to move the camera by that amount, right? And by the way, I don't want to really displace these. I don't think because these uh, should actually be there. Well, actually, I guess they should move. Hmm. How do I want to do this exactly? I guess I want to set this right off the bat. Right? You can see default upright entity transform. We can say uh, entity transform off. Oops. That's no good. There we go. Uh, default upright transform and then offset P. Uh, in here, what I want to do is I want to see, uh, it, can I just displace that, basically set that camera up uh, to be pointing in a different location? Because all these guys use the entity transform, right? Uh, I think everyone does. Yeah. Uh, so if I want to, I could displace everything uh, by saying whatever the camera displacement is, I can just add that in here. Uh, and I could do the same thing for, for uh, these push rect outlines as well. Right. Uh, now it's not the the kind of the, the annoying thing about it. Uh, I don't know what we actually do with camera P here. I guess it's behind my head. Um, get ground entity point entity minus camera P, camera relative ground P. Ah, so the only reason we were even using the camera P is just to fade things in and out as we went up and down. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so our camera P, when we do the subtraction, uh, all we would need to do is, is add the displacement in here, and then we know where the camera's placement is in the world, right? Uh, so this is just our um, world mode camera displacement. So we know where the camera is, 
Uh, but then what we have to do is when we do default flat transform here, everything is going to be have to be when we do our transforms, it's going to have that uh, world transform in it. Uh, and so yeah, so I'll I'll change this here to be camera p. Uh, I guess camera p is actually uh, is not the camera displacement though. Camera p is where the camera is. The displacement's the negative of that. Uh, so we still want to do we still want to have a thing called camera displacement if that makes sense. Uh, camera p. Yeah. There we go. So camera displacement, um, to avoid having that be negative, I guess what we would say is maybe we'd call that a delta camera P or something like this. I just want to, I need to know how to call it, or camera offset. Let's call it camera offset. That's easier, because camera displacement, it's hard to tell which way it's phrased. Is it phrased in the in terms of I'm going, I'm, this is how much the camera moves, or is it the opposite, which is how much things move because of the camera, right? Uh, so I'm going to call it camera offset. So then we know that that's true, and the entity transform, right, is going to be the negative of the camera P, right? Um, so let's say this here is uh, the world transform. And that's just the camera P. Uh, inverted, right? So these guys are going to have world transform, world transform, world transform. Uh, and then, uh, down here where we do displacement. Uh, again, I'll just instead do minus camera P. All right, uh, offset is not a member of, oops, what is it then? Offset P, sorry. All right, uh, so I think that's all correct. Right, let's double check uh, by maybe playing with that a little bit. So uh, here I am in uh, right in, in this uh, world here. I'm going to try displacing myself by moving the camera. I'm going to move the camera this way, which would move everything else that way. So I'm going to move the camera one unit to the right. Okay, perfect. Uh, that's what I wanted to see. And I'm gonna try the same thing in Y. Yeah, uh, okay. So that's what I was hoping for. And you can see uh, what I was hoping would be true is true, which is the simulation boundary is shown right there, which is what I wanted. Okay, uh, so now we have the ability to have a camera offset. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start <clears throat> very lightly playing with that. Uh, so, excuse me, uh, in here where we do <clears throat> our stuff for room-based camera, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let's add some displacement in here for the camera and I'm just going to make it uh, be based off of that apron. So if I know that when I transition is 9, I'm going to use like everywhere from like 8.5 to 9, for example, uh, to displace the camera uh, towards the other uh, screen, right? So what I want to start is I want to define something here first. I want to define uh, like a, a V3, which is the, uh, you know, room delta or something. And the room delta is going to be 18, uh, 10, right? That's how much we move when we go, uh, you know, if we were to go the X component is how much we go for uh, a room horizontally, and the Y component is how much we go for a room vertically. So then, uh, when we come in here, I would know that, all right, uh, let's see, like, uh, like H room delta maybe is half of that. So now I can say, like, okay, if we're H room delta X, right, or uh, negative H room delta X, H room delta Y, 
negative h room delta y, okay? Uh, and then when we do our displacement here, I know I can say, well, this is room delta x, negative room delta x, room delta y, uh, negative room delta y. And the reason I want that encoded now is because obviously I want to make sure uh, that I don't have to, uh, that, that everything is based on a size we can change. Uh, and that could even change dynamically maybe if I want it to, right? Okay. Uh, so one other thing I want to try, I guess that I didn't try, is I want to be able to displace the camera uh, away from me as well. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly also say, what if I was to do uh, whatever the world is here, uh, I'm going to take the camera uh, offset and I'll make the Z uh, equal to one so that we displace uh, the camera vertically. Does that work at all? Oops, world mode is spelled wrong. So no, it certainly wouldn't. Okay, good. Because that's another thing I want to be able to do is I want to make sure I can displace the camera uh, vertically. I mean, uh, depth wise relative to the screen. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, what happens when I'm in that apron, right? So what happens when, because uh, I know what happens when I move, right? I know what happens when I do the displacement here, uh, but I also wanna be able to say, once I know, uh, once I know that I'm outside of a sort of more conservative region, uh, what's that? And so I'm gonna do a thing that's like room apron here, uh, and room apron, I'm just going to say for now is like 17.5 uh, and 9.5 F. I'm just going to say like 0.5 of the way there. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if entity P uh, dot X is uh, greater than H room delta. And we'll just do one for now and then we'll see how we can kind of generalize that up. Uh, I'm now going to say, okay, instead of H room delta, I'm going to use like H room apron. Uh, and I guess actually that's, I really just want that, right? Uh, so I guess what I really want to say is H room apron is just whatever the half room delta X is minus uh, that 0.5, right? Minus whatever the, the apron value is, like so, right? Uh, so <clears throat> when I do this, I now want to set the camera's displacement value uh, specifically, right? So what I want to do is assume, I'll start out uh, by assuming that if nothing else happened, right, that the world mode's camera uh, uh, offset is just going to be nothing. So We'll assume it's nothing and that'll reset it, right? So now we're in the normal case. Um, and I guess I should work on the Y value first because we're gonna go off the top of the screen as the test. So let's do this one first. Uh, so if I wanna go off the top of the screen, what I wanna do is do something interesting when I get to this uh, half point here. And you'll note it's not quite right. It's, we're, we're uh, it seems like we're off by one. So I feel like this really shouldn't, should be like 19 or something. I don't know what the value should be. Uh, but it feels like it's wrong at the moment, uh, right? It needs to be, it needs to go up by one screen's worth uh, and it doesn't at the moment. Uh, so I'm not sure, not sure what the deal is with that. That's much better. Is 12 better? Twelve point five. I'm not sure. Like I said, we'll have to we have to go look at what we're actually creating for room sizes first. All right. So let's start it out. Doing it based on deltas like that is probably also not a great idea, uh, and so we should probably fix that too. All right. At least we're now a little bit cleaner there. Okay, uh, so when I am going off the top of the screen and I see that I'm um, past the apron value, what I wanna do is I wanna do a clamp map to range. Remember we've got uh, our sort of standard way of, of taking, getting a T value from, from two sort of boundary points and a point in between. 
so clamp zero, I think it's called like clamp zero one map to range, yeah. Uh, so I wanna do one of those, clamp zero one map to range to get myself a T value. And I know what my min is, my min is my room apron, right? My H room apron. And I know what my max is, it's my uh, H room delta. So all I need now is the actual thing to map, and obviously that's the location of the player, right? Because I know the player is between these two. So that gives me back a T value, and I can use that T value to control the camera offset. What I'm going to do is make the camera offset so that as it goes, uh, it's going to go about halfway uh, to where I want it to change, and then it'll flip and we'll go the other half of the way, right? So what I'm going to do is say, okay, the camera offset in this case, is going to be equal to uh, whatever the uh, whatever the room delta would be, um, and I want it to go to, to half of that, basically. Uh, so I want to take my t value, and I, I want to, to make the camera offset be half of whatever that uh, room delta is. Uh, and we'll see what this does as we, we kind of go uh, back to the code, right? seems really fast. Oh, you know what? I'm not, I'm using the body right now, which moves really quickly. I think I want to use the head. No? Hold on a second. Uh, I need something slower here. Uh, so let's do an add player. What are we tracking? Yeah, it's tracking the body. It needs to track the head. All right, that's a thing that's at world creation time, so I'm going to have to restart in order to make that happen, but that's okay. Okay, so there you can see, right, we're doing that half interpolation, right? And then when it gets to the halfway point, it snaps. Why does it snap? Well, because we haven't done the corresponding side yet, right? So let's go ahead to the sim region and do the corresponding side. Here is the exact same code, and again, like, we're going to want to generalize this out and do a bunch more work on it, so bear with me. Um, but we're going to do the exact same thing here. If we're less than the negative room apron, we're going to do the exact same mapping from uh, negative H room delta Y uh, to H room apron Y. And you notice I uh, um, uh, inverted those, right? Because this is the... Uh... No. Sorry. Still the same. There we go. Uh, so yes, uh, so I have to make these negative because I'm talking about the bottom part of the screen now instead of the top part of the screen. So I'm talking about the negative apron, right? And I'm mapping between the negative apron uh, and the negative delta to figure out where we are. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but only this time I'm talking about moving backwards, right? So I'm talking about sliding the camera the other direction. So now when we pop the camera over, we'll be on the other side of the apron uh, and we should get the other part of the scroll, right? So hopefully you can kind of see how that's working. Right? Now, that's like uh, one of those things that's... Uh, one of those things that's better to look at, I think, if we can slow time down a little bit here. Uh, so what I'd like to do, uh, because there's a couple of things that we I think we want to... Oh, wait, that's not what I want to do. Uh, where is the simulation? There it is. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crank the simulation time step down at... To, to really slow. So now we're just moving at molasses speed. So now I'm going to move down, right? And now I'm going to move up again. And so what I'm noticing is I'm noticing a little glitch there. Right when we transition between the two. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. When we change simulation regions, there's a little bit of a glitch, but I don't know what it's from.
So we still have, we have some kind of a bug there with our camera changeover. Uh, and again, this is something that we're going to clean up, so that's no big deal, but, you know, just be aware that it's there as we, as we sort of converge on this. Uh, all right. <clears throat> and that could be because, too, we're, we're not really, again, we take, uh, we, we may have not quite written it correctly so that we're not continuous through. There's all kinds of things we could have done wrong, so we'll get there. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to just tune this a little bit. Uh, I'm going to make that room, that I think this was a little bit too... Uh, uh, too small, right? So I'm going to go back here uh, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Oh, whoops, that's not at all. That's the wrong value. Uh, so we were talking about a half meter, so it's a meter's worth of play. I'm going to make it two. So you can see that if we allow it to be two, you can actually stand in there, right? Uh, so maybe that's a little bit too much. Uh, I'll, I'll drop it down to like seven. And now you can't stand. Now as you transition between the two, right? But it feels pretty good to me. Except for the glitch, right? So that's getting better. All right, uh, so yeah, we gotta fix that glitch, but other than that, we're getting into better shape here. What I also wanna do is I want to add a little bit of bounce here. So what I wanna do is I wanna say, let's have a, uh, a bounce height or something where we displace by like up to a meter in Z. Uh, and the reason I wanna do this is just for fun. Uh, it's just kind of silly, but I think it might be fun. Uh, so I'm going to put a bounce height in here, and the bounce height is just going to be like squared t. Uh, so as as we like go to that middle point, we just do a parabolic arc up to the bounce height, right? Uh, if that makes sense, is that right? So squared t, no, that would be that would be this curve. So I need it to go the other way, right? I need it to actually be square root of t, right? I need it to be, I need it to be this shape. So that it will it will I, I I effectively need it to be an inverse parabola. So I suppose what I actually want um, is uh, well, let's see what I actually want. Let's see what I actually want. So what I want is I want this upside down. Right, so I pretty much want that, right? I want negative t squared, uh, and I want it to be uh, displaced over so that it's uh, so that it starts at the origin and goes up to the height of the parabola and then down, right inside the you know at the at the one point, right? Uh, so, oops, I didn't mean to undo that. There we go. Uh, so essentially, you know, I want it so that uh, I, I actually have a displaced t so that the height is there. Uh, and I guess that's negative t. I need it to also be so that it, it gets back to zero uh, at the start, right? Um, so since rather than playing with the graph, I think it's easier to just write it out. Uh, what I want is I want an f of t that's equal to a t squared uh, plus b t plus c, right? So in other words, I want a uh, I want a parabolic arc. I want um, f of zero to be zero, and I want f of one to be one, right? Uh, so I should be able to start out by solving that, and then I guess I don't have any other information about it. I need one more piece of information, which I guess I want it to be curved upwards, not downwards, probably enough, but we'll see. So if I solve this out, right, 
if f of zero is zero, uh, well, that doesn't really tell me anything other than c is zero, right? Uh, meaning, because as I, as I, which is fine, I mean, I need to solve for three things, but so I plug in a zero here, I get zero plus zero equals c, right? And that equals zero. So c is definitely zero, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so that's simple enough. Um, that's right, right? Yeah, and f of one equals one, uh, which means that when I have t squared uh, plus t, uh, that's gotta be equal to one. So I have t squared plus t equals one, right? Um, so yeah, so from that I can determine, ooh, now that's, what am I talking about? My brain is fried today for some reason. I have a plus b equals one. Probably you try to plug in for the right term there. Right, uh, so I know that a plus b equals equal, also equals one. Uh, so I could just say, all right, a is one minus b, or I guess if we went in alphabetical order, we could say b is one minus a, right? Uh, so all I need to know is what my actual value uh, for, um, what I'm actually gonna plug in for a, uh, and so I don't know if there's anything else I want to know about this value. I'm trying to think of like, like I said, whether it curves up or down would be mostly all I would need to know. Uh, so if I have, uh, if I write a thing here, that's like a t squared um, plus uh, one minus a t, right? Uh, I can take a look at the graph of that for I'll, I can try some different values of a and see what they look like. Uh, so let's see here. If I say graph a t squared, uh, so let's say one t squared plus, that would be one minus one, so that'd be zero. So it would just literally be a t squared, right? Uh, and then I get the shape that I didn't want. So if instead we plug in like a negative one for that, right? Uh, let's say, I'm just gonna see if that helps us. Uh, that would be negative one squared, which of course is, oops. T squared. Uh, plus <clears throat> negative t. Uh, and that also goes the other direction though. Does it not? What did I do wrong here? Because this should always give me f of one equals one, right? Did I plug that in wrong? Oh, right, sorry. It's negative t squared minus t. And there's what I actually wanted. Uh, of course, that, but that does, that goes backwards though. Did I plug that in wrong again? One minus a. Ah, that would be two t. Man, plugging in this way is, is tricky. That's what I wanted. So I guess uh, that is the values I actually want. Man, it's a slow math day here, in case you couldn't tell. Brain is fried. Uh, this math was actually correct, but doing this took forever. Um, not sure what the easiest way would have done. Oh, I know how we would have done that. I guess we could have said what we wanted the derivative to be here. Well, okay, anyway, point being we figured it out. So this is the equation we actually want, uh, which is negative t squared plus two t. All right. So uh, let's just say it's negative t squared plus two t times the bounce height. Uh, to give that little parab parabolic flavor, if you will. There we go. Ooh, 
Lovely. Yeah, okay, so now it's, again, it's a little bit too fast, like I would like it to be maybe not as fast as that, because it's a bit too much, I feel like, at this point. Or maybe it just needs to be more subtle. Uh, you know, maybe bounce height should be something less. All right, well, that's good enough for now, but uh, like I said, tomorrow I think our probably the first thing we should do is figure out why we're getting a glitch there, because we're definitely getting a glitch as we go across, and we want to clean up this camera code anyway uh, as we go forward, so we should probably figure out what that is, and what because we're definitely getting like a little hitch. Again, you might not be able to see it, uh, because depending on like your compression, like how the video stream is coming across, you may uh, be getting like better or worse uh, ability to you know to see what's actually happening there but on the transition uh, we're definitely getting uh, a bug there it might be because the camera offset oh you know what it is it's that the camera offset is not taking into account the tr change this change um, so probably what we would need to do is say okay this has to happen afterwards. And since we're, right, because you can, you can see what's happening there, right? We move the camera and then uh, we were still using the offset from the previous frame. So it's way offset. Then it gets solved properly on the next frame and jumps back. Uh, so in order to do that, right, when we do a uh, mapping here, we would have to update what the entity's uh, position is in order to compute this. So we need to basically say, like, we compute a new entity P after we update to figure out what the camera's offset should be for the next frame, uh, right? Which is kind of janky, but that's what, we're, what we have to do. Uh, so in order to do that, what we could say is like, well, all right, if we apply this offset, then we know what that is, right? The entity P that we would use is just going to have that same offset applied. Right? So whatever the delta is that we apply here, we've got to save it, right? So we'd have to say like, okay, apply delta is whatever this is. And what I'm thinking probably, I'm just guessing, uh, but ba like I'm thinking the way we probably will end up cleaning this up is just by making the camera an entity, right? So that we don't have to deal, deal with any of this stuff anymore for it either. Uh, all right, but let's try that. Uh, although if the camera goes by the applied delta, then this will be, sub that'll be subtracted away, right? Hey, look, the glitch is gone. Okay, uh, so let's actually go. To the Q&A.
Keeper Caleb, are you concerned about the player seeing outside the boundaries of the map or seeing into other rooms when the camera zooms out? Uh, no, but that's a game design thing, not an implementation problem, right? That has nothing to do with the implementation. If you, if that's a game design decision that someone wants to make at some point, they can just turn it off. Cast of five, so no more smooth scrolling. Uh, yeah, the game design requires there to not be smooth scrolling. It has to be room based. Uh, so when you go to a room, uh, you're in that room until you're like done with what you're doing in there, and then you can go uh, to the next one. Soy sauce the kid. Uh, I know the rooms are going to fit the screen, but will there be variable sized rooms with the camera making it fit to the screen? Uh, so yeah, I don't know whether I'll ever want rooms other than the standard size room, uh, but I'm guessing that, uh, that maybe once or twice for interest purposes, we will allow that to happen. There's no, nothing like, uh, there's nothing in the simulation that requires us uh, to have rooms be this size, right? Does this stuff work right now too? Yeah. It's funny to see it so tiny like that. <clears throat> When thinking of enemies, would you have classifications for AI, level one approach, constantly zombie? What would be the main levels you'd say for difficulty or reward fling? Uh, that's game design again, which I don't do. And Gaster 5, I am already 39. Someone probably needs to update the, uh, the 38 in there. Popcorn, have you seen the warp glitch from Link's Awakening? How would you avoid that? Mm, what is the warp glitch in Link's Awakening? I don't know. Uh, does anybody know what that is? The warp glitch? Or can explain it? Is it simple enough to explain, or would it something complicated that I'd have to see? So this one is about, it looks like, 24 maybe? 23.5 I should say we'll have to see what we actually make our, our we're, we're gonna need to actually make sure that we have concepts of how big rooms are if that makes sense um. so that's a weird number too is it 24 I don't know uh, what was I gonna say here too Oh, right, so uh, we can, if we want to, just copy this out uh, where everything's an X. Just to see what it looks like. While I wait for someone to tell me whether they know what Link's Awakening's glitch is. You press start when before you enter a room and the link will end up on the top of the screen. Ah. Um, well, we don't have that. So I'm guessing the reason they have that, well, I can, I can sort of explain why I suspect they have that bug. Uh, and we don't have the same kind of bug. Uh, we don't have the same kind of engine, I guess is what I would say. So we probably wouldn't be able to have the same kind of bug as that. Right? 
Um, <clears throat> do, 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 do. Sorry, I gotta just I gotta hop a little bit here. Ah, I'm stuck. I can't get back in the world. Okay, there we go. Um, so the reason that I'm assuming that they have that bug, and I don't really know anything about Link's Awakening, but I'm just going to say what I assume. Uh, so, you know, we actually have a coherent sense of world space in a, certain, uh, in a certain sense, meaning that we actually know where you are in the world because when we pack you into world chunks, right, you know, we've got a, a world that's divided up into these world chunks. And we know you're like, you know, this far from the center of this world chunk. And then when we simulate you, we simulate you in a real Cartesian space there, and then we pack you back in. So at no time are we unaware of where you actually really are in the world. Like, we have a very coherent definition of that. So I don't think we can have that bug. Now, we could have other bugs, but not that one. Uh, what I assume they did is they had something like, well, okay, uh, we've just got a sprite position on the screen. So here's the screen, and like Link is walking towards the top of the screen and he gets here, right? So Link's there, and they're like, we gotta trigger the scroll subroutine. So you go out to like scroll, right? And now what happens is the scroll routine makes Link, I don't know, disappear, or who knows how they draw him, right? I don't, I have, like I said, I haven't seen the game, but we scroll the background this way, right? But we haven't updated Link's actual position values to be anywhere other than here. And so if we can interrupt the thing that tells it to reset his position to down here, then he'll just be at the top, right? But we don't have that happening. Like we're not ever unaware of where you actually really were in the world. We don't have any screen space location for you. We have a simulation space, but we unpack into it and pack out of it during every frame. So there's no way for you to interrupt that process, if that makes sense. Sergeant Carnival, if you want a good hysteresis example, a heater controller does the job. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, it's hard to explain if people don't already know control theory, but, like, yeah, if you have something where you're like, I gotta turn a heater on to heat a room or turn it off based on a thermostat, right? You wanna, like, you don't wanna constantly turn the heater on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off all the time to try and keep the temperature, right? Uh, what you want to do is heat it up to like a bit above the temperature, let it come down a little bit below the temperature, and then turn it back on again, right? So that you can kind of keep it within a band, I'm guessing. Not that I've ever written a thermostat controller, but... All right, sounds like we are done. Okay, thank you everyone for joining me for another episode of Handmade Hero. It has been a pleasure coding with you as always. If you would like to follow along at home, uh, you can always pre-order the game on handmadehero.org and it comes with the source code so you can follow along with what we're coding. Uh, you can also go to the forum site if you want to ask questions. You can go to our Patreon page if you want to support the video series. You can go to our schedule bot if you want to know when we're live. And you can go to our episode guide uh, to catch up on past episodes. Uh, and that is really all there is to say 
about that. I will be back here tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, uh, when we will do probably a little bit more camera work, but that's mostly all I really need to do for the camera for now. We'll probably just get a better sense of rooms. And then I think it's time uh, to start thinking about our actual like physics updating representations and stuff like that. So we're probably gonna have to start getting into some multi-entity push a block around other things like of this nature. Um, not really push a block around because you don't super do that in this game, but you, you know what I mean. Those sorts of things where we have some entities interacting with each other so that we can clean up that part of the code. Uh, that's about it. Hope to see you guys back here tomorrow. Until then, uh, have fun programming and I'll see you on the internet. Take it easy, everybody.